Let's talk about typecasting. And what typecasting is, it is temporarily changing a variable's data type. And so we can move from one data type to another using a typecast. The three primary values that I'm starting with are an integer num that is 65, a double value called num2 that is 97.99, and a character let that is capital Y. And on the right here, I've shown what value we're going to start with, and then the output is going to represent what happens once it is cast. On the first line, we start with the integer 65 and we cast it into a double. And when it's cast, it's going to go from 65 to 65.0. That .0 is going to be appended on the end because it is no longer an integer data type, but it is a double data type. On the next line, we're starting with 65 again, but instead of going to a double, we're going to a character. And when we change the integer 65 into a character, it's going to change it into its ASCII value or Unicode value, which is capital A. Next, we start with num2, which is the double 97.99, and we're going to take it from a double and typecast it into an int. And so when I say 97.99, it is not going to round up. It is just going to truncate it. It's just going to lop off that decimal place. So I only get 97. And then something similar happens when we look at what happens when we take a double and turn it into a character. It is not going to round up. It's just going to truncate the 0.99. And it's going to use whatever value is there as the non-decimal number, which is 97, and convert it into its ASCII or Unicode value, which is lowercase a. 97 is lowercase a in ASCII and Unicode. Next, instead of saying I'm going to convert a value into a character, I'm going to start with a character and see what happens when I convert it into a number. So I start with the letter capital Y, and it doesn't have to be a letter. This would be true of any symbol. And I'm casting it into an int. So it goes from capital Y to 89. And the equivalent in ASCII and Unicode of capital Y is 89. And then something very similar happens when I cast it into a double. Capital Y is 89, and then it appends the point zero at the end to indicate it is a double, not an int. And it's important to note here that the changes that I've made to num, num2, and let are not permanent. The only change that has been made is on each system out print line. And once that system.out.print line has run, num is still an int, num2 is still a double, and let is still a character. In this next program, what I've tried to show is what happens when you try to take num, num2, and let and temporarily turn it into a Boolean value. The last three lines take the Boolean value and say, what happens when I turn it into a character, int, or double? Interestingly enough, absolutely nothing happens because it would cause an error. None of the primitive data types can be cast into a Boolean, and a Boolean cannot be cast into other simple data types. And if you try to do this, the compiler would give you an error. Last, what we're going to try to do is take num, num2, and let, and convert them into strings using typecasting. And then we're going to take the string str and try to convert it into char, int, or double. And all of these attempts would fail. A simple data type cannot be converted into a class, which is what string is. And a class like string cannot be converted into a simple data type in this way. If you wanted to convert a number into a string or another value into a string, there are methods that do this, but typecasting is not the correct way and will result in an error. I want to take a closer look at the character data type and show you that the character data type must always be typecast. And when I take an int and try to turn it into a character, hopefully you can see why a typecast would be necessary. Because what we're doing is we're taking a larger data type like an int and moving it into a smaller data type like a character. And any time we make this type of conversion, which is called a narrowing conversion, a typecast is necessary. And when I add that typecast, I would get capital A from 65 to a character. Now, let's say that we were going the other way from a smaller data type into a larger data type. This would produce an error. It is not because it is a widening conversion. 
We are taking a smaller data type and moving it into a larger data type, which there should be plenty of room. If that was the only thing that we were doing, there wouldn't be an error. There's another problem with this that is not as apparent as I'm moving into a smaller or a larger data type. Let's look at the next slide and see what the issue really is. What the issue deals with is the range of byte and short and how byte and short are being stored versus how a character is being stored. So what I've shown in this slide is the range of byte and short and character. I really want to point out the difference between a short and a character. You can see that the range is significantly different because short includes negative numbers, whereas character does not. And character has a much higher max value than what short does. Let's see why this is. What I've done on the bottom is shown how a short or a character might look in binary or ones and zeros. Both of them store 16 bits of information or 16 ones and zeros. But there is a significant difference. When you create a short or any integer for that matter, the first 15 bits are used to store numbers, but the last bit is not used to store what value the number is going to be. It's used to store whether the number is positive or negative, and it has nothing to do with what the number is itself, except for the fact whether it's positive or negative. And so when we're referring to this type of integer, and this type of storage, we would say that short or byte, they're both signed integers because they have a negative or a positive value relating to their last bit. Character does not have the same problem. Its last bit can add or take away from the actual value of the number. It is not going to indicate whether it's positive or negative. Therefore, we have a much higher range but you also notice that there are no negative values. When we try to convert a smaller value into a character, it's not a problem of a smaller value fitting into a larger value. The problem is, is that byte and short have that sign bit at the front and character does not. So no matter what conversion we're making, whether it is a widening or narrowing conversion, the value must be typecast if you want any numerical value to be a character. Typecasting is the process of temporarily changing a variable's data type. And sometimes you want to convert from one data type into another, and a typecast is sometimes necessary. The way that you typecast is put a parentheses in front of the value that you're trying to typecast and then put the data type in which you're trying to cast the value into inside of the parentheses. Boolean values cannot be cast. So you can't turn another data type into a Boolean value and you can't take a Boolean value and turn it into some other data type like a character or an int. Strings also cannot be cast into primitive data types like int, double, or char using typecasting. And you cannot take a char, an int, or a double and turn it into a string. It does work with methods, but casting is not the correct way to do it, and it will result in an error. Finally, the character data type, no matter what you're trying to convert into a character, requires casting. Whether you're making a widening conversion or a narrowing conversion, it doesn't matter because characters do not have a sign bit and they're stored differently than what integers are that do have a sign bit, which are making them negative and positive. Typecasting is important because it allows you to change from one data type to another and knowing the different rules associated with it is an important part in making the conversions run correctly.